are fortunate to live in a place that is abundant with freshwater resources. Our creeks, streams, and rivers create an intricate ribbon of waterways throughout the province. This abundance of fresh water contribute to virtually all of Alberta's wealth, be it food, natural resources, or places to be. With continued pressure on land use, it makes sense we would want to secure this natural wealth for generations to come. To that end, a new conversation has been started to safeguard our waterways involving governments, industry, and service providers. After years of research by organizations like the Alberta Conservation Association and Trout Unlimited Canada and others, it's been shown roads are a significant risk to our native fish populations. Over the past 20 years, the number of roads in our forested areas has dramatically increased. There are thousands of kilometers of roads winding through the eastern slopes, the boreal forest and prairie areas, where roads intersect watercourses, the impact on our native fish species is evident. By law, roads built by industry over water crossings must ensure there is no barrier to fish passage. Studying fish habitat is hardly a core activity for an oil, mining or lumber operation. Still, some companies have recognized the impact their crossings have and are taking steps to fix the problem. Industry what did drive this, and there really wasn't a lot of compliance pressure from the regulators. There wasn't that issue of they were getting letters, they were being told to fix things. It really was industry saw that they had a problem on the landscape. It was a vast problem and they weren't sure how to address it. Industry and independent environmental consultants are now working closely with government agencies to ensure there is consistency when it comes to following new directives. And, uh, you know, it's a massive project, uh, numerous thousands of um, of crossings throughout the province and we built up a legacy of uh, crossings that are no longer serving uh, to allow fish to, to pass through and uh, to get up to their habitat above crossings. The water course program is setting the bar for cooperation and collaboration which is a good thing considering just how complex this issue is. Because the issue is so big there's thousands of crossings and we've determined that there's probably over 40% non-compliance. So where do we start? And then it's, uh, we can't kick everybody off the ice. So that's why it's taken so long is we have to bring in all the regulators, all the stakeholders, all the crossing owners, say, how do we, how do we want to approach the issue? How do we prioritize where we're going to focus? So priority watersheds, where are our native fish most at risk? It may be difficult to put an exact number on just how many stream crossings there are, but work along the eastern slopes has already catalogued thousands. So we have fixed 350 fish barriers across the eastern slopes to date. We've inventoried 10,000 plus stream crossings and assisted in prioritizing that. And we've opened up over 500 kilometers of fish habitat. And to me, that's definitely a huge success. We still have a ways to go. We still have barriers on the landscape. We still have companies that aren't participating under the directive or aren't aware, perhaps, and that knowledge needs to get out there. But ultimately, I am very proud of the direction that the companies have gone. And by creating this new access to more habitat, it's going to have a positive impact on fish. Well, it could mean all the world. Um, when we have crossings that are impassable to fish. So we talked about sedimentation being one of the, the chronic issues we have. Uh, the other chronic issue is, is stream crossings that create fragmentation. So fish are unable to get upstream. If we're able to open up that stream, uh, as we're recovering these species and these different fish species, they have more room. So we, we like it to a hotel. If a hotel only has, if a hotel has 20 rooms and you can only get to four, it's pretty hard to build your population. So. We need to open up more of those rooms and, and more of the, 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 the spawning habitat, the feeding habitat. More room means more room for fish. With so many industrial endeavors taking place on the landscape, it's necessary to develop a common playbook when it comes to stream crossings. Um, roadway watercourse crossing inspection manual that's kind of a shared playbook. We all need to have a shared playbook. 
And then it has a tool in it, the inspection form, that actually gives us standardized data, which is very powerful, because then we, that's where we get our, where do we prioritize our inspections? Where does a company or a service provider prioritize their maintenance and their remediation? And so we could look at a watershed or a water course um, and look at all the different um, crossing owners and crossings and their conditions. The focus of the stream crossing program along the eastern slopes is to protect trout habitat. But here in the boreal, it's the Arctic grayling that are the species of concern. Moving now into the boreal, the, the differences that we're seeing, I guess, are much different um, fluviality in regards to stream uh, characteristics. Um, with the focus in the boreal being mostly now on grayling habitat is the first priority, but ultimately still addressing all watercourse crossings across the boreal. And then ultimately the differences that we're seeing in the boreal are, we have um, you know, more beaver activity, we have you know, more blockage issues, uh, lower grading streams that have less stream power, so we see less movement of sediments through those systems. And ultimately passage tends to be um, usually less of a concern from the con uh, perspective of hanging culverts and more of a concern from blockage now of, of debris and, and potentially beavers. At a cost that could easily reach into the million dollar range per crossing, industries are reaching into their own wallets to address fish barriers, like this one in the Swan Hills area. CNRL submitted to us this year a watershed remediation for a component of the Swan, uh, Swan River watershed. And so in that work they went and did an assessment of all of their crossings in a component of that watershed and ultimately came back with some non-compliant crossings that were barriers to fish movement. And ultimately with their work now that they're proposing to do this year, um, they will ultimately be removing two crossings and replacing two more and ultimately that's going to result in opening up 22 kilometers of uh, Arctic grayling habitat. Well, up on the tributary of the Smoky River, Strat Resources has just completed a significant project designed to eliminate sedimentation on a potential bull trout spawning stream. On Prairie Creek, Husky Oil partnered with Trout Unlimited Canada to allow fish better passage to upstream habitat. There is still a long way to go, but examples like this demonstrate the positive impact we can have on our environment when there is a willingness to collaborate.